tools in the wood shop are used for cutting, shaping, and finishing wood. Wood is a natural material and is subject to dimensional changes with changes in humidity and temperature. Woodworking tools are not designed for tolerances as fine as thousandths of an inch, and tolerances of a hundredth of an inch require great care and frequent measurement. There are two wood lathes, a drill press, a power planer jointer, and a belt sander in the wood shop. There are also three different saws in the wood shop. The band saw, used for precision cutting and for curved cuts, the table saw or arbor saw used for making long straight or angled cuts, and the radial arm saw used for making short cuts or cross cuts. The band saw is similar to the band saw in the sheet metal shop. However, the blade is specifically for cutting wood and should not be used on any other material. The band saw can be used for making curved cuts and for making cross cuts in thick stock, but is most often used for cutting the corners off of square stock in preparation for shaping on a lathe or for making straight cuts on a piece that has been shaped on a lathe. There is a blade guide on the bandsaw. It should be adjusted to be just slightly higher than the piece to be cut. The blade guide is held in place by a locking screw on the back side of the bandsaw. Loosen the screw. Adjust the guide to the correct height and then tighten the locking screw. It is best to use the guide or fence when making straight cuts. The fence has a locking lever that holds it in place. Raise the lever and then adjust the position of the fence. Press the lever down firmly to lock the fence into position. There is also a push rod based guide that can be used for making straight cuts when precise positioning of the piece is not required. The power switch on the bandsaw is clearly labeled. Push the start button to start the saw and push the stop button to stop it. To make a straight cut, place the piece to be cut near the blade and adjust the blade guide to the correct height and the fence to the correct position if needed. Push the start button and advance the piece with a gentle, steady pressure. Do not force the piece, but let the blade do its work. Be sure to keep your fingers away from the blade. It will slice off fingertips quite cleanly and neatly, but cleaning up the blood is a major nuisance, and reattachment microsurgery is not always successful. Push the stop button when you finish the cut. A piece of square stock is often prepared for shaping on the lathe by cutting off the corners on the band saw. Calculate the positions of your cuts carefully. You want to end up with an octagonal prism, not a square prism that's 70% smaller than the original. Begin by drawing crossing diagonal lines on the top and bottom of the piece of stock. The intersection is where you will want to position the piece on the lathe. It is much more difficult to find the center after cutting off the corners. Next, adjust the angle of the table. There are two nuts on the underside of the table that must be loosened with a wrench before the angle can be adjusted. After loosening the nuts, adjust the table angle to 45 degrees. The angle indicator is on the underside of the table, on the front of the saw. Then re-tighten the two nuts with a wrench. Do not over tighten the nuts as they will not last long and must be replaced if repeatedly over tightened. Adjust the blade guide and the cutting fence to the correct positions. Turn on the saw and advance the piece with a gentle steady pressure. Keep your fingers away from the blade. It may be necessary to use a second piece of wood to push the piece so that your fingers don't get near the blade. Repeat the process for the other three corners. The wood lathes are similar to the metal lathes, but they lack the precision measurement and cutting tools. Cuts on a lathe are designed to leave the piece radially symmetric. Unlike on a metal lathe, you do not have access to the end of a piece, and you cannot cut or drill holes on the end of a piece. The spindle is the driven part of the lathe which spins the piece to be shaped. It has a sharp point which goes into the center of the piece to be shaped and four blades which grip the part. The tailstock sits opposite the spindle and is able to move freely along the length of the lathe. The long black lever on the back side of the tailstock locks it in position. The back wheel moves the live center of the tailstock in and out 
and the lever on top of the tailstock locks the live center in position. Begin by marking the center of the piece to be shaped. On square stock, crossing diagonal lines will mark the center quite nicely. Place the center of the piece on the center of the spindle or driven end of the lathe. Slide the tailstock forward until the live center is almost touching the piece and lock the tailstock in place. Carefully advance the live center with the tail wheel until the pin is firmly in the center of the piece and lock the live center in place. The blades on the spindle need to dig into the piece in order to turn it. The tool rest supports the tools which you use to shape the piece. Lift the lever on the bottom up to adjust the position of the tool rest. Push it down to lock the tool rest in place. Push the lever on the side down to adjust the height of the tool rest. Pull it up to lock the height. The proper position for the tool rest is 1 8 to 1 half inch away from the piece at its furthest extent and at a height that places the tool just above the center line of the part. The guard protects the operator from large flying pieces of debris. It can be raised while placing the part on the lathe, but should be down whenever the lathe is turned on. There is a fairly simple locking mechanism to keep the guard from being accidentally raised. There is a collection of chisels on the wall near the lathe. Use the straighter edged ones for making laterally straight profiles, and use the curved ones for making laterally rounded profiles. To start the lathe, first make certain that the piece is secure and lower the guard. Then push the green button on the front marked Start. To adjust the speed, pull the speed lever out and rotate it to the appropriate position. Then push the lever back in. The appropriate speed depends on the type of wood and how out of round the piece is. If in doubt, ask a proctor or Mike. To stop the lathe, push the red button marked Stop. The first process in shaping a piece is to round off the edges. Rounding can be done on a piece of square stock, but is much easier on a piece where the corners have already been trimmed. Start the lathe. Hold the handle of the chisel in one hand, and use the other hand to guide the chisel by holding the blade near the tool rest. Advance the blade until it is just making contact with the piece, and move the chisel back and forth to remove material. The chisel will vibrate quite a bit with an out of round piece, so work slowly and keep a firm grip on the tool. You may need to adjust the position of the tool rest as the dimensions of the piece decrease. Be sure to turn off the lathe before adjusting the tool rest position. With patience you will have a perfectly round section. It is sometimes advisable to leave square or octagonal sections on the ends of the piece to make the post-shaping steps easier, or when making table legs. Once the initial rounding has been done, the shaping of the final profile can begin. To measure the diameter at a specific location, turn off the lathe and use a pair of calipers. Never try to measure a spinning part. Great unpleasantness will ensue if you try. You can mark the location of a specific cross-section with a pencil. Turn off the lathe. Use a scale or ruler to mark the dimension from one end, always the same end, and place a mark on the piece with a pencil. Next, start the lathe and gently bring the pencil into contact with the piece at the location of the mark. You will soon have a line circling the piece. Just recognize that the line will disappear as soon as you start to carve the piece at the line location. As you shape the piece, be sure to stop and measure dimensions frequently. As with all cutting tools, you can always cut it smaller, but you can never cut it larger. Be especially careful as you get near final dimensions. The table saw or arbor saw can be used for making cross cuts, which are cuts across the grain of a piece of wood, but is used more often to make rip cuts, long cuts along the grain of the wood. The height and angle of the cutting blade can be adjusted, and there is an adjustable fence or guide for making precision cuts. Occasionally, one wants to cut slots in a piece of wood without cutting all of the way through it. This is the purpose of the blade height adjustment. The blade height is adjusted with the wheel on the front of the saw. The angle of the blade can be adjusted with the wheel on the side of the saw. 
for making beveled cuts, which are useful in making boxes and drawers. There is also a push rod located on the underside of the table, which can be used for making angled cuts. The fence can have one of two orientations depending on the thickness of the piece to be cut. To switch from one to the other, loosen the two screws on the side of the fence base and slide the fence off of the base. Slide it back on in the new orientation and tighten the two screws. Repeat the process to return it to the original orientation. The position of the fence is adjusted by lifting up on the lever, sliding the fence into position, and pushing down on the lever. There is a scale along the edge of the table to show the width of the cut piece. The base of the fence has two markings to show the width of the cut piece on the scale. The first is for the fence in the horizontal position, the second is for the fence in the vertical position. Here the fence has been adjusted so that the cut piece will have a width of 2.00 inches or 50.8 millimeters. To turn the saw on, push the green button on the front underside of the table. To turn the saw off, push the red off button. To cut a piece of wood, first adjust the blade height and angle if needed, and then adjust the fence. Turn on the saw, place the piece of wood against the fence, and advance it toward the blade. Keep your fingers away from the blade. It will usually be necessary to use a second piece of wood to push the piece so that your fingers don't get near the blade. The blade has a guard to keep body parts from being cut. Please don't try to defeat its purpose. Advance the piece with a slow, steady pressure. When the cut is finished, turn off the saw. This piece was cut with a fence set to 2.00 inches. The radial arm saw is used principally for making cross cuts, cuts across the grain of a piece of wood, but it can also be used to make rip cuts, long cuts along the grain of the piece of wood. The height, angle, and position of the cutting blade can be adjusted. However, great care must be used in adjusting it for anything but straight cross cuts, as it is far too easy to adjust it to cut into the table, which is expensive and a nuisance to repair. Mike has threatened to lock out all of the adjustments if the table gets any more damage or the saw isn't returned to its original orientation when you're finished. The video will show you how to make these adjustments, but don't use them unless absolutely necessary and make sure you don't cut the table. The height of the saw is adjusted with the lever on the front of the table. Turn it counterclockwise to lower the saw and clockwise to raise it. The saw can be in two different orientations with respect to the arm. Parallel to the arm and perpendicular to the arm. Parallel to the arm is used for making cross cuts. In this orientation, you hold the piece of wood stationary and pull the saw across the piece to cut it. Perpendicular to the arm converts the saw essentially into a table saw with the blade above the table. In this orientation, you lock the saw in position and move the piece across the saw. It's particularly easy to remove a finger or an arm in this orientation. To switch orientations, pull the lock lever towards the front of the saw. Then pull the release lever toward you. Rotate the saw until the release lever snaps back into place and push the lever away from the front of the saw to lock the saw in the new orientation. The entire arm can be rotated to cut a piece at an angle. Be sure not to cut the table. To swing the arm, Pull the release lever toward you, swing the saw into position, and then push down the release lever. You may want to test to make sure the arm is locked in position. In addition, the saw can be tilted to make angled cuts. To tilt the saw, firmly grasp the saw handle to support it. Pull the lock lever toward you and push the release lever up and to the left. For a 45 degree cut, rotate the saw until the release lever snaps into place and then push the lock lever back in. For any other angle, simply rotate the saw to the correct angle and push the lock lever back in. Make sure you don't cut the table. Be sure to return the saw to vertical when you are finished. The power switch for the saw is located under the front edge of the table. To make a cross cut, the only recommended type 
First adjust the gauge along the scale at the back edge of the table to adjust the length and tighten it into position. Next, push the saw all of the way back and put the piece in position. Then turn on the power and pull the saw toward you across the piece. Never push the saw across the piece. Because of the direction of rotation of the saw blade, pulling the saw across the piece will result in a smooth cut and the piece staying put. Pushing the saw will not result in a smooth cut and the piece may jump off of the table. The belt sander is for shaping and smoothing pieces of wood. It will remove a great deal of material in a short amount of time, so practice on scrap and measure carefully when working on anything critical. This is the power switch. Bring the piece to be sanded and shaped gently against the moving belt. Move it slowly and smoothly. When you are finished with any of the tools in the wood shop, you should clean up the wood chips and the sawdust. Dust off any flat surfaces with a brush. And then use the shop vacuum to clean up all of the remaining debris. We are all responsible for keeping the shop clean.